Hello, I'm Ed Fuquay, Young Adult Librarian here at Woonsocket Harris Public Library. And I'm Miss Gabby from the Children's Department. We're here for another exciting episode of Book Talking. This episode actually is exciting, and I'm not just saying that to get more hits. I'm excited to hear. Yeah, so we're talking about pirates. Um, this is our second part of our pirate discussion. Yes, it is. So in the first part, we got up to the golden age of piracy. Mm -hmm. And everything sort of started to come together. And probably all the pirates that you've heard of come from this period. Yeah. It was a relatively short period of time from about uh, 1700 to like 1758, 1760, something like that. Oh, it didn't last that long. It didn't last that okay. long. Well, the most famous pirate of all, Blackbeard, yes. although he'd been a pirate for years without really distinguishing himself, mm -hmm. the period that he's really famous for was only like two years. Which was? Um, just toward the end of the golden age of piracy. His death kind of marks the end of it in a lot of ways. Oh, okay. um, So basically what happened was a bunch of pirates, uh, rather a bunch of sailors were in the Caribbean there's a lot of trade going back and forth. Colonial powers are fighting for control over the entire area. And a bunch of uh, sailors who were used to raiding other ships at wartime suddenly found themselves at peace. So they got together and started doing what they, do, what they knew how to do best, which was attacking other ships and taking their stuff. Yeah. Before they'd done it legally as privateers, and now they're doing it for their own purposes as pirates. Um, as sailors, they were used to living apart from society. Yeah. And basically, when you're at sea, you're a thousands of miles from civilization. There's no means of communication in those days. Mm -hmm. So you basically, every captain was the king of his own little country. Pretty much. So they valued their freedom, they valued their independence, and the idea of setting up their own society apart from regular civilization was something that appealed to them very much. Yeah. And plus, it gave them a place to like, you know, repair their ships, mm -hmm. and more importantly, spend all their money. Um, one of the reasons why pirates in real life never buried any treasure chest full of gold, yeah. they spent money as soon as they got it. Do you know what they would usually just spend it on? Uh, mostly women and alcohol, and they lose it all in gambling dens. Oh my god. Yeah. You would think for people that like are on the sea the whole time that they would you know, be rich by the end of it. But, but they spent all their time alone dreaming about what they do when they got back to a city, and as yeah. soon as they got there, they spent all their money. Wow. Um, what did they do? Did they kind of just like equally portion it out? Yes. Okay. Um, pirate ships had definite rules as to how the goods were to be divided up. Okay. Every person got a share. Um, generally speaking, the captain got two shares, twice as much as anyone else. Mm -hmm. And they usually broke it down, like the ship's doctor got like a share and a half, and the quartermaster got a share and a half. So the higher so up forth. you were on? The higher up you were, the more that you got. Okay. But still, every single person got a share. Uh -huh. And since they voted on who became captain, Yeah. Um, that way, um, it was fair. Exactly, it was pretty fair that way. They decided who became captain, and he got double shares. Mm -hmm. um, and the captain's word had to be followed during time of combat. Any other time, you could question and challenge your captain. Yeah. Um, you know, if you're a sailor in the British Navy and you challenge your captain, he could have you basically beaten to death. He could have you flogged to death. Oh no. Yeah, if you hit someone like a hundred times with a, a piece of knotted rope with like bits of metal in it and it gets infected, there's no antibiotics, then you die horribly. Oh. It's, yeah, flogging in those days was in many cases a death sentence. Yeah. Um, that was the world that these pirates escaped from. Mm -hmm. They wanted to set up a better society than the one that they had come from. Yeah. Um, they finally settled in Nassau, in a place called New Providence. Yes. Um, which today is a famous vacation hotspot. In those days, it was the home of the Republic of Pirates. <laughs> they actually set up their own charter of government. They made up rules for how to conduct themselves, rules of conduct, and so forth. Um, and basically set up their own society completely apart from the rest of society. Mm -hmm. And that gave them a place to like spend their money and bring their ships in to repair it, pick up fresh supplies, and so forth. Like their own little home. Exactly. Okay. It was their home away from home. Um, New Providence uh, was a really good location because it had a very shallow bay. Um, so that way the smaller ships of the pirates could get there and the huge heavy warships of the navy couldn't get there. So it was pretty much like a barrier. Yeah, like a barrier. There's actually an island in the front of the harbor. Um, so you couldn't have, like if, if they were attacking you per se, which eventually happened, mm -hmm. you couldn't have like 20 naval vessels all start sailing into the harbor at the same time. So there's a big island in the way. Yeah. At the very least they'd have to split up. Oh. That would give the pirates a chance to do something. Um, so they knew what they were doing when they they knew what they were doing, yeah. yeah. Plus the area around that is filled with treacherous shoals, yeah. there's sandbars and things like that near the coast. Mm -hmm. So without knowing the area very well, it was very easy to get wrecked in that area. 
and they depended on that to protect themselves from the government. Um, they, for a while, were very successful. Uh, Benjamin Hornigold and Richard Jennings were the two who really founded it. And they brought up and trained um, Edward Teach, who had become better known as Blackbeard, uh, Charles Vane, Calico Jack Rackham, or all the like famous pirates who all came out of this period. Mm -hmm. um, they became very rich and very fast, and for the most part, spent all the money as soon as they got it. Um, anyone who plays computer games and wants to play Assassin's Creed 4 Black Flag, you can actually be one of the pirates that helps set up this colony. Wow. Yeah, so it's cool. kind of a cool game. Um, they had rules and regulations as to how things should work. Mm -hmm. um, but unfortunately, as they said in Pirates of the Caribbean, sometimes it's more of a suggestion rather than a rule. Yeah. Um, for instance, the pirates valued their freedom, so a lot of them hated slavery. Yeah. They would attack slave ships and free all the Africans who were held prisoner there, and they found that freed slaves made very good pirates, and some of them were quite successful. Mm -hmm. They had no barriers to color um, in the pirate world. Uh, several uh, mixed blood people became pirate captains. Wow. Um, at a time when that would never happen anywhere else wow. except their society. They had a democracy where everybody could vote, which yeah. again, no place else was that actually going on at that time. Um, however, pirates were pirates and they wanted to make money, so there were pirates who actually took part in the slave trade. Wow. Yeah, I know, they shouldn't have, but morality and piracy don't always go hand in hand. When that happened, was it just like a select few like out of like the, sh like the, the crew that did it, so they would just like kind of like go behind the captain's back, or? No, I mean, the captain would make the decision and the crew would go along with it. Oh, okay. Um, but not every pirate captain agreed with those decisions. Yeah, so the ones that didn't agree? Um, they would just ignore the pirate ships, ignore the slave ships, or free the slaves. Okay. Um, you know, if you're on a ship that has African members of your crew and you're trying to, you know, take over a slaving ship to go sell the slaves, it's not going to go over very, very well with your crew. No, very, no. Um, some of them, like Blackbeard, although he had a fearsome reputation, he was very into public relations. Mm -hmm. He wanted people to be scared of him. He spent a great deal of time building up his reputation as being a monstrous, fearsome opponent. <laughs> they did things like stick slow burning like fuses into his hair. Oh. He literally would walk around with like smoke curling off of him from these fuses that he had lit. Uh, he had a bandolier of pistols that went across his chest. I think like, yeah, like this probably. Um, because um, it takes a while to reload a pistol in those days. Yeah. You had one shot and you had to like stuff powder in there and reload. So he had a bandolier of like six pistols. So you grab a pistol and shoot, you grab a pistol and shoot, you could do that six times. It's almost like having a six shooter, which wouldn't really be invented for quite a while. Mm -hmm. um, he was thinking ahead of the times. Like exactly. Yeah. yeah, Blackbeard was way ahead of his times. <laughs> if he could have had a PR person planting newspaper stories, he would definitely have done that. Wow. He pretty much did that. He made sure everyone knew his name. Um, but at the same time, he never killed anyone once he had control over them. Mm -hmm. Once he took a ship, he never massacred the crew or the passengers. Yeah. He never tortured anyone. There's no record of him ever killing or torturing anyone outside of like the middle of combat when they're hit with a cannonball or mm -hmm. something like that. People died then, but not after the ship surrendered. Yeah. Uh, on the other hand, you had Charles Vane, who had been trained by the same people as Blackbeard, and Vane was a psychopath. He loved torturing people. Um, so do you think it was only because he kind of like felt remorse for them, or? I don't know. Blackbeard uh, is an interesting character. We know very little about him. With most of the pirates, we don't even know their real names. We believe he was called Edward Teach. We could be wrong. Okay. Um, that's just an assumption on our part. Um, uh, Bain, although he came from the same background, had the same training. He was the exact opposite. He would torture anybody at the drop of a dime. Um, yeah, he was awful. Um, like virtually all the pirates, he came to a bad end. Because sadly, no matter how successful they were in the long run, most of them came to a bad end. Yeah. Um, one of the things I wanted to mention before continuing is I mentioned there were no uh, barriers to color. Mm -hmm. Anyone could be a pirate. And that included women. Oh, that's great. I yes. love that. Well, there's always been female pirates throughout history. Some of the most famous female pirates, um, famous pirates were female. Uh, the earliest one that we know of is Grace or Granuel O'Malley, who was from Ireland. Okay. Um, she was an Irish pirate who controlled the Irish Sea. Uh, this is during the time of uh, Queen Elizabeth I, back yeah. in the 1600s. Oh yeah, this is like way before we yeah. Yeah. A long time before this was fashionable. She took over a pirate ship and managed to terrorize the British shipping so much. Eventually she struck a deal with Elizabeth. She supposedly, according to legend, had a meeting with Elizabeth as one queen to another. 
and she got a pardon for her crimes and went back to Ireland and retired and settled down. Oh. Well, you know, as opposed <laughs> to getting killed. Um, you also had over in China a woman whose name was probably Ching Shi, although she has five or six different names. Okay. Um, she was the widow of a pirate captain who took over his vessel and wound up becoming much more successful than he was. Um, she controlled, she was known as the Pirate Admiral. She controlled an army. Um, at the height of her power, she had over 20,000 people and over 200 ships in her fleet. Wow. She had one of the largest, most successful navies in the world at that time. See? That's great. Yeah. I love that. I love hearing um, that. Eventually, rather than get killed, she did, in fact, agree to retire mm -hmm. gracefully. The government allowed her to retire um, with all of her ill-gotten gains. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but the most famous ones from the golden age of piracy were Anne, Bonnie, and Mary Read. I've heard those. Before. Yes, they're famous yeah. enough almost everyone's at least heard of them. Yeah. Um, they're both fascinating characters. Uh, they both become symbols of a lot of things. Um, the women's movement, the LGBTQ movement. Mm -hmm. um, they both have fascinating histories. Um, Anne Bonnie was a woman who had a long history of being a troublemaker. She had red hair, she had a fierce temper, um, she would fight anybody, never back down from a fight. Um, she wound up stuck, married to someone she didn't like, yeah. and wound up being a, a barmaid on New Providence, which did not suit her very well at all. Mm -hmm. Now, there happened to be a pirate there named Jack Rackham, who became famous as Calico Jack Rackham. He wasn't a very successful pirate. There was nothing to distinguish him from anyone else except the fact he liked really flashy and flamboyant outfits, hence the name Calico Jack. He was famous for his brightly colored jackets, and that was about it. But, um... At least he was known for something. Yeah, well, he and Anne Bonny, like struck up a friendship, and uh, they eventually um, got together and grabbed a ship and sailed off and became pirates. Mm -hmm. And so they had a pirate crew that included a uh, Mr. Reed. Um, now, Anne and Reed struck up a close friendship almost immediately. They discovered they had a lot in common. Mm -hmm. uh, for one thing, they were both uh, had quick tempers, they were both very good in a sword fight, they both enjoyed being pirates, and they were both women. Really? Yes, Reed was actually Mary Reed. She'd been cross-dressing most of her life. Um, she spent almost all of her time dressed as a man. Um, Do we know why? Um, she was dressed that way when she was young because her, her family was trying to get an inheritance from someone who hated girls. Okay. So she had to pretend to be a boy when she was young, and she just never gave it up. It just stuck with her? Like once she actually got married and settled down, um, but once her husband died, she put diamond on the clothing again and disappeared into the woodwork. It was always easier to live as a man, certainly in those days. Yeah, definitely. Um, and she too had a fierce temper and was very good with the sword. Supposedly, once after she killed someone in a duel, as he was bleeding out, she unbuttoned her shirt to show that, so he would die knowing he had in fact been killed by a woman. <gasps> Yeah. That's lovely. <laughs> she was very cool. And, uh... Oh, I, I really love that. That's yeah, great. somehow no one else on the ship had noticed she was a woman. But, like, um... Anne saw through her right away. Yeah. The two of them became very good friends. How close friends they were, we don't know. Mm -hmm. The dog keeps a record of things like that. Um, but the two women in Calico Jack were quite a trio. Um, they managed to successfully terrorize the ship, the uh, Caribbean, for quite a while. Uh, but there wasn't a lot of discipline on Calico Jack's ship. Yeah. And they were surrounded by the Navy at one point when most of the crew was drunk and unwilling to fight. Yeah. Um, Anne and Mary fought to the best of their ability and held them off for a while, but eventually they were overwhelmed by superior numbers and uh, were, were sent to prison, where they were all condemned to death. Um, in those days, if you were a pirate, it was an automatic death sentence. So they got killed? Well, maybe, probably. Um, what happened was they were arrested, they were sentenced to be hanged, and somehow, while they were in prison, both of them wound up pregnant. No one knows exactly how it happened. Um, supposedly, they both wound up pregnant. Okay. Um, during the, so they had a, a grace period while they while they had birth, while they gave birth to their children. And during that period, Calico Jack was hung. Supposedly, Anne Bonnie went to his cell to say goodbye to him, and she was overheard to use the phrase, "If you'd fought like a man, you wouldn't die like a dog." <laughs> So it's just pretty unsparing, you know, right to the end there. Now, supposedly, um, uh, Anne got developed a fever and died in prison. Aww. And uh, Mary was apparently rescued by her rich family who finally looked her up and got her to from prison. But there's no real record of what happened to either one of them. 
there's no actual proof that Anne Bonny died in prison. There's certainly no grave for her or anything like that, no, yeah. no record of death. Um, so the odds that they somehow managed to finagle their way out of prison and escape together might Possible. easily have happened. Yeah. Um, there wasn't good record keeping in those days. But while that was going on, the golden age of piracy was rapidly coming to an end. Mm -hmm. Because all good things must come to an end. So um, the truth is, New Providence in a lot of ways, although it was a great idea for a city, it was actually a terrible city in practice. Mm -hmm. Um, they had no infrastructure. Um, no one was digging like latrines, so there was no sanitation. Mm -hmm. um, when they took over the city, there was an old Spanish fort that was there, which had cannons that actually worked. Mm -hmm. But as the pirates lived there for like a couple of decades, no one bothered to repair the walls, so they started to fall apart. Uh, so uh, one day, um, Woods Rogers, he was the newly appointed governor of the Bahamas, and to put an end to the scourge of piracy, the newly crowned King George I sent him down there with a fleet of ships to snuff out the pirates. And Woods Rogers had himself been a pirate, yeah. Um, so he knew exactly where to, where to go to find them. So he knew all the tricks. Yeah. Okay. He went down there, he sailed into the Bay of New Providence, and um, he offered them a deal. They had a certain amount of time to surrender, mm -hmm. and they could give him a pardon for all their past deeds. Or he could like, arrest them all and hang them. Um, tragic. Well, it would seem to be a pretty obvious deal. Either you surrender or you die. Yet, strangely, many pirates didn't take the deal. Yeah. So um, they were like, I might as well die. Blackbeard, Charles Vane, and Calico Jack all managed to escape the dragnet. Wow. According to one version, which I don't have verified from other sources, Charles Vane used a fire ship. He said fired one of their own unused vessels and sailed it into the British ships. While the British ships were scrambling to get their ships out of the way, he sailed right past them. There's another version, either he or Blackbeard, instead of sailing through the harbor, sailed up a river deeper into the island and came out at another outlet of the river. Wow. So, one way or another, they all escaped, um, and they were all hunted down. Um, so you know what happened to Calico Jack? Charles Bain was also hunted down and eventually caught and killed. Yes. Blackbeard stays a little more interesting. Um, apparently, he wasn't really opposed to the idea of retiring. Mm -hmm. He just wanted to cut a better deal. Since Woods Rogers wasn't offering him anything except a pardon, mm -hmm. Blackbeard figured, I'm the most famous pirate in the world, I can do better than that. Yeah. So he escaped, went on a series of raids in various places, building up a whole ship full of treasure. And he eventually made a deal with the governor of South Carolina. No one knows the details because it was highly illegal, and there's no actual record of it. But it's considered a fact that he managed to retire and buy a plantation. And the governor of the Carolinas just had no clue it was really the notorious Blackbeard. <laughs> There's even a version of the story in which he got married and was that settled. Really? But there was still a price on his head. He was a wanted pirate, one of the most famous pirates in the world, like I said. And um, eventually Governor Spotswood of nearby Virginia mm -hmm. um, arranged for a trap in which he was caught on board one of his ships, which got snagged on a sandbar off the Carolina coast. And um, yeah, Captain Maynard attacked and managed to get on the deck of the ship and beheaded Blackbeard in a brutal sword fight. Yeah. Well, Maynard expected he would get like a knighthood out of it. Yeah. He figured this would be the, the start of his terrific naval career. In fact, it was the end of his naval career. Well, when he like settled down and like started getting married and everything, was he still a pirate or would he like still... That's the question. Some historians say that by giving clemency by the governor of the Carolinas, absolved him of his past crimes. Okay. The crown hadn't necessarily recognized it, but then all the American colonies were still a part of England at that time. Yeah. This is still the early 1700s. So whether or not he was actually still a wanted man or not, we don't know. Okay. But in any event, Captain Maynard did not reap any rewards from his, his service. Wow. Um, his career in the Navy stalled. He never got that peerage that he wanted. Um, oh my gosh. Yeah. So that was the end of the golden age of piracy. However, piracy, of course, is still around. It never really went away. Still to this day? To this day. Um, there are always going to be pirates. Anytime things are being transported from one place to another by so water, there will be pirates to steal it. Okay. Uh, for instance, pirates played a big role in the American Revolution. Yeah. Uh, many of the sloops um, that volunteered to join uh, the new Continental Navy were originally pirate vessels. Wow. And pirates also became smugglers. They would buy things legally and bring them back into places where there was a huge like import tax on them. And by bringing them you know, secretly in, they can make money that way, much safer than attacking ships and having people shoot cannons at you. Yeah, definitely. Um, uh, so they're still around, but they're just safer. Yeah. yeah. Um, there's a famous pirate, uh, Jean Lafitte, in New Orleans. Mm -hmm. 
And during the War of 1812, when the British attacked America again, um, he led his, a small group of, of pirate ships against the British to defend New Orleans from being taken. If he hadn't done that, the British might very well have taken New Orleans mm -hmm. um, and held it. Um, so pirates have always played an important role in American history. Yeah. Um, and to this day, um, they have Somali pirates off the coast of Africa seizing ships. They're not quite romantic swashbucklers these days, <laughs> but you know, they are still pirates, you know. Wow. And of course, um, if you happen to download something illegally from the internet, which I'm sure you don't do. No, definitely not. No, no never. No. But if you were to download something illegally from the internet, you'd be a video pirate. Wow, really? It's still called piracy. Wow. Yeah, it's still piracy. But it's illegal. But it's illegal, so don't, <laughs> don't do, do it. it. <laughs> Just gotta put that out there. Definitely. So that's the golden age of piracy. I know they don't quite live up to Hollywood. No, it's cool though when you really think about it. Because like when you think of pirates, you just kind of think of movies and like you yeah. never realize how real they actually are. They were very real. And what we love about pirates for the most part is their sense of freedom. They yeah. live by their own rules. They made their own laws. I feel like being a pirate though was such a better deal than like, you know, the actual like real world. I guess. It was much better than being in the Navy at the yeah. time. They could always depend on pirates. You get money, you don't gotta get yeah. Long to death. Yeah, yeah. That's great. Um, since this is technically book talking, I should mention some cool pirate books. <laughs> um, Treasure Island by Robert Louis Stevenson, which is the classic pirate book. Everybody should read it. It's a lot of fun. Yeah. Um, a whole book about female pirates. Bold in their breaches. Gives you more than anything you ever wanted to know about all the female pirates throughout history. It is a fantastic book. Um, the Sea Rover's Practice. This is a really cool book. I was so lucky to find this I book. I saw it in the, in the shelves. Yeah. Um, sea Rover's Practices are written by Benerson Little, uh, who is a former Navy SEAL. So he's okay. a man who knows something about combat at sea. And he sat down and figured out the nuts and bolts of exactly how a pirate ship operates successfully. How, how do you take a vessel in the age of sea? What's the most efficient way of doing it? Where do you aim your cannons? Like, you know. Um, yeah, he spent a lot of time figuring out exactly the daily minutiae and things like that that required by pirates to, to survive. Um, so it's a fantastic book. And The Complete Idiot's Guide to Pirates. Um, which is, the idiot guides are always simple overviews oh, yeah, yeah. that like go through, it's a nice thumbnail sketch of everything you need to know about pirates. Um, they, they cover all of New Providence in like one paragraph, however. I have a question on yes. the problems. So. Did they ever rebuild it up? And is it like, I don't know, still like a tourist? It's now NASA in the Caribbean. Really? You go there on vacation. They have that museum there with some of the pirate artifacts that were left behind. Oh, that's awesome. Okay. So at least it's I believe the actual fort that the pirates never repaired, part of that is still standing. That's cool. That's Our secret is still standing to this day. The cannons no longer work, of course. Yeah. But uh, yeah, it's now a huge tourist attraction. Okay. Um, so at least it's still like a part of history and it's still there. Yes. Okay. Um, there's also uh, Pirate Fever. It's a book about, uh, kind of a local book, focuses on New England pirates. Mm -hmm. One of the reasons why I got it for my collection is that it has photographs of real pirates in here. And many of them are people I work with at King Richard's Fair. That's really so cool. there are actual real pirates going around today, apart from ones that rob people. Yeah. Those that embrace the classic, you know, swashbuckling style of piracy, they're all reenactors. But yes, I know people who perform as pirates, I know people who live on tall ships and sail them to this day. Really? Yeah, absolutely. There's still tall ships out there that need crews. That's awesome. I've sailed in a tall ship myself at least one uh, voyage, yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, we got to raise and lower the sails and everything. This is very cool. Um, I know people actually have the pirate brand on them, so... Yeah. Gosh, that's so cool. So, yes, yeah, so the, the age of piracy has not left us. It's still out there. That's great, though. That's cool. Um, and that is all the time we have today. So we'll join you next time. Um, until then, be safe. And have a great rest of your week. We'll see you then. Bye. Bye.